What's going on guys? Dare here with Fantasy Football Advice coming at you with another Fantasy Football video. Today, we have a really good one for you. We are going over potential league winning picks at every position. Each player we do have on this list has a combination of value and upside. Not only that, each of these players is going in a different stage of the draft, so it's entirely possible that some of you out there could potentially land all four of these players. We'll go through one quarterback, one wide receiver, one running back, and tight end. Before we do that though, let's hop into stat of the day. Yesterday's stat of the day was which running back with at least 50 pass blocking snaps allowed zero quarterback pressures in 2019. The correct answer was Mark Ingram. A lot of you got this one right, but Luke Toledo, you were the first. Congratulations. As for today's stat of the day, in 2019 in the fantasy playoffs weeks 14 through 16, which fantasy defense scored the most points through that span? Leave your answer in the comment section down below we'll be happy to let you know who wins in tomorrow's video also guys we're only going through a handful of league winning players but our draft package outlines all players we're trying to target and exactly where we would take them not only that you'll have access to our consistency charts risk ratings player breakdowns offensive line rankings and much more so if you are trying to step it up a notch in 2020 consider signing up for our draft package you can find that at our website thefantasyfootballadvice.com link as always in the description box below with that out of the way though let's hop right into the video how about we start with the player on the thumbnail there's no secret there it's Brandon Cooks of the Houston Texans throughout this offseason we have been pretty vocal about the potential upside of a player like Will Fuller we have featured him in several videos throughout this offseason, but most of these same reasons we like the upside of Will Fuller and where he's going in drafts they directly apply to Brandon Cooks as well the Houston Texans ranked sixth in vacated targets from a season ago. They lost 167 total targets, which was actually a whopping 32.2% of the overall target market share. What's even more impressive, though, is the amount of air yards that are currently on the table. The Texans ranked second in vacated air yards with a whopping 1,597, roughly 35% of the team's total air yards from 2019. While, yes, the team did bring in Randall Cobb and he's likely to stay step in and take over some of those targets when it comes to air yards there are few receivers that are better than brandon cooks at soaking those up in 2018 with the Los Angeles Rams, Brandon Cooks actually ranked 11th in air yards. And even going back three more seasons all the way back to 2015, Brandon Cooks had actually never finished lower than 15th in air yards on the season. That is quite impressive considering that through that span he had played on three different teams with three different quarterbacks. Yet in each offense, Brandon Cooks was easily able to produce similar results just simply due to his superior deep receiving skill set. For those of you who may not know, air yards are easily one of the most most predictive stats when it comes to projecting out fantasy points so typically if you have a player that ranks very high in air yards their fantasy ranking follows suit so it really shouldn't come as too much of a surprise when I tell you that excluding last season the four prior years Brandon Cooks never finished lower than the wide receiver 14 heading into last season you could not find a player that was actually more safe to draft than Brandon Cooks having a career floor of a high-end wide receiver two with wide receiver one upside that as safe as it gets and you know he was able to produce with different quarterbacks on different teams so for him to actually return to the same offense which he did not have the luxury of doing for the three prior seasons there was virtually no risk in the pick now unfortunately it didn't work out Brandon Cooks easily burnt a lot of fantasy owners he actually finished outside of the top 60 wide receivers and due to name value he was a really tough player to drop for those reasons though, that's exactly why we can get him as a value on draft day. And would it surprise anybody at all if Brandon Cooks came back and posted top 15 wide receiver numbers yet again? It really shouldn't surprise anybody. I have a feeling that by the end of the season, when we're looking back at the draft compared to the production posted, a lot of us will be wondering why exactly we doubted Brandon Cooks so much. He's going outside of the top 30 wide receivers, which eliminates all risk in the pick. And while Will Fuller is likely to be the leading receiver in this offense he clearly has more upside in a vacuum if I'm making a wager on which player is going to play in more games or which player has a higher potential of at least playing in 10 plus that easily goes to Brandon Cooks if Will Fuller does miss time and Brandon Cooks is still on the field there is no way he is not an auto lock to start every week we're going to hop over to the quarterback position and unfortunately there is no late round guy like Patrick Mahomes in 2018 or Lamar Jackson in 2019 players we were particularly 
particularly high on, there isn't really a late round quarterback that sticks out with that amount of upside, but there is a quarterback going criminally undervalued, and that quarterback is Dak Prescott. In ESPN drafts, he is the quarterback six coming off the board. That's behind players like Russell Wilson, Kyler Murray, Deshaun Watson, who in their own right, they're solid quarterbacks as well, but Dak Prescott is not getting enough credit for what he was able to do in 2019. Dak Prescott was largely undrafted. He went as the quarterback 23 off the board. His fantasy finish last year? Quarterback two. We feel strongly that if Lamar Jackson didn't pop off the way that he did and cement himself as such a polarizing player that exceeded all expectation, Dak Prescott, he would be getting much more attention. Prescott ranks sixth in pass attempts, second in passing yardage. The dude quietly threw for 4,900 yards, just shy of that elusive 5K passing yardage mark. He also ranked fourth in passing touchdowns, eighth in rushing yardage at the quarterback position, and even left some fantasy production on the field by posting just three touchdowns in the rushing game. Three rushing touchdowns is actually half of what he had typically produced over the three prior seasons leading up to 2019. That's an additional 18 points. Now we're starting to talk about Dak Prescott. Scott potentially separating himself from the rest of the pack. Those players I'm talking about are the ones that I mentioned going ahead of him, which are ranked pretty similarly throughout all platforms. You have Russell Wilson, Deshaun Watson, throw Kyler Murray in there as well. But despite many people being higher on those players I just mentioned, we have Dak Prescott actually ranked in the same tier as Lamar Jackson and Patrick Mahomes. We would even go as far as to say that Dak Prescott has overall QB1 upside this season. Reason being, he has the best weapons he's ever had in his entire career. Prescott historically has always played up to the level of talent around him. The only times he's really struggled for fantasy and throughout his career has been when the team has lacked weapons. We saw an instant boost in production as soon as the Amari Cooper trade went through. And now we're adding CeeDee Lamb to an already uber talented receiving core that also features Michael Gallup. If that wasn't enough to convince you about the upside of Dak Prescott for 2020, you also have to think he is highly motivated to perform and even try to outproduce what he did in 2019 because the contract situation between him and Dallas, they were unable to get a deal done. Dak Prescott is going to be trying to prove himself and show the team that he is worth every dollar that he's asking for. And we've mentioned it a few times throughout this offseason that you really want to get as many players on your team that are betting on themselves, have financial motivation to perform at their highest peak. And that's exactly what we're going to see from Dak Prescott, considering he already finished as the QB2 last season and has much more upside as he heads into 2020. The fact that he's going off the board in ESPN leagues as the QB6, it's a travesty and exactly why he has the potential to be a league winner. Moving over to the tight end league winner, it definitely has to be Mark Andrews of the Baltimore Ravens. The formula for this one, it's super simple. Which tight ends can even compete with the top two, Kelsey and Kittle? Realistically, no other tight end outside of Mark Andrews. We're talking Zach Ertz, more of a floor play this year. Even Darren Waller, there will be more competition for targets than he had a season ago. While the late round guys are definitely coming in as great values, they really are lacking the overall upside to potentially finish as the TE1. Mark Andrews, however, that is 100% in his range of outcomes. In 2019, both Kelsey and Kittle averaged 12.9 fantasy points per game. Mark Andrews, 11.2. So he was behind by both of those two tight ends, but only by a mere 1.7 fantasy points per game. There is a massive difference though. Kelsey, he played on 93 percent of snaps. As for George Kittle, 88 percent. Now Mark Andrews, who is just a mere 1.7 fantasy points per game behind those two, he only played on 44 percent of snaps. That snap share, it ranks 67th among all tight ends. The numbers he was able to produce on such a limited amount of snaps, it's really quite incredible. He had 98 targets, converted that into 64 receptions, and even scored double digit touchdowns. Definitely something he can replicate and potentially exceed in 2020 because the deeper you look into Mark Andrews, really the better it gets. He led all tight ends in the area of deep receiving, something he also did through the second half of the season in 2018. That's a season and a half sample. And what makes his upside even greater for 2020 is the fact that Hayden Hurst is no longer on the roster. While Hayden Hurst didn't put together any significant amount 
of fantasy points, his snap share was near identical to Mark Andrews. The fact that the team felt comfortable enough to let Hayden Hurst go, it's a clear sign and an indicator the team has both faith and trust in Mark Andrews, or else they wouldn't have felt comfortable enough to let such a talented player go. So with all signs pointing to Mark Andrews being even more involved in the offense, coupled with his remarkably high target rate while he ran routes, his hog rate, if he plays anywhere near the percentage of snaps of Travis Kelsey or George Kittle, if we're talking sheer upside, he could 100% be the TE1 for 2020. Is it a realistic expectation? No, but we're talking ceiling here, and we also have to consider the value. Travis Kelsey, George Kittle, they're going to be gone by the end of the second round. Mark Andrews, he's being drafted well over 20 picks later. Even in ESPN leagues, Zach Ertz is being drafted ahead of him, so when you combine the potential upside with the super large gap in their ADPs, it's easy to see that if all those players hit, Mark Andrews could ultimately be the one that ends up the league winner. The running back league winner we have here is being criminally underdrafted right now. So much so, he's being drafted outside the top 55 running backs. When looking for a league winner, if you could ever get a player for one of your last draft picks, and he ends up even being an RB2, this could be a regular staple in your roster. That's exactly the type of upside Damian Harris brings to the table in 2020. In yesterday's video, we did our do not draft list. No surprise, Sony Michelle made the list. Michelle throughout his career has been massively inefficient, also a non-factor in the receiving game. And to make matters worse, it appears he's not going to be healthy to start the season. The team signed Lamar Miller, an aging, less efficient running back who's coming off of a significant injury. Clearly, the goal of the signing was to just have more depth at the running back position. But if you pay attention to the reports coming out of camp, the one that's being hyped up in this backfield, it's Dane. Damian Harris. Damian Harris was a third round pick just a season ago. He has the prototypical size and speed to potentially be a lead back in an offense. The dude even caught 52 passes in college. Sony Michelle, one of the biggest knocks on him is that he does not get used in the passing game. Damian Harris, he has the ability to catch the ball out of the backfield, which means he is not being forced off the field in clear passing situations. While James White would ideally be the better option in those types of situations, if Damian Harris produces and exceeds what is expected of him, you can guarantee his opportunities in this offense will continue to increase. For a player that you're investing virtually nothing into, who's coming into this season likely as the starting running back of this offense, an offense presumably led by Cam Newton with a massive chip on his shoulder, that is 100% the upside play I'm looking to get in every league because if this pick hits, it would be a complete game changer for your roster. But guys, that's going to do it for this video. We really hoped you enjoyed. If you did, how about hitting that like button? If you're new to the channel, please hit that subscribe button. We thank you all for watching, and we'll catch you on the next one.